let's start another lecture of ATX and I strongly believe you people are really good and you are in best of your health I strongly believe so let's see what we have in this lecture today in the last class I did discuss uh, when do we need to change allocation of personal allowance and I did discuss marriage allowance also I'm just discussing one or two more things on marriage allowance then we'll move ahead marriage allowance marriage allowance marriage allowance mm -hmm. okay uh, for marriage allowance number one condition is marriages must yes and the second is husband and wife both must be basic rate taxpayer and the third one is whenever marriage allowance is being claimed then one spouse to another spouse will transfer exactly personal allowance of 1260 you cannot transfer less than 1260 you cannot transfer more than 1260 the personal allowance which you need to transfer is exactly 1260 what i really want to say for example we have husband and wife let's say husband is having employment income of 40000 and let's assume wife is having uh, employment income of 11500 okay it means look at this uh, wife employment income she is not having enough income to utilize her personal allowance so let's say they are claiming marriage allowance so what happens personal allowance 12570 from 40000 if i deduct 12570 so i'll be getting 27430 taxable income now listen and listen carefully when they are going to claim marriage allowance then exactly 1260 of personal allowance from the wife will be transferred to husband which means that wife is having personal allowance of 12570 from this i'm going to deduct 1260 so i'll be left with 12570 minus 1260 i left with 11310 so which means that wife is entitled to get now personal allowance of only 11310 minus 11500 so it means wife is going to have the taxable income of 190 what cannot be done wife cannot do one thing their wife says i have an income of 11500 first i'm going to use the personal allowance of 11500 and then the remaining personal allowance which is 12570 minus 11500 what i'm going to get 12570 minus 11500 it is coming 1070 wife cannot transfer 1070 to the husband when you are claiming marriage allowance when you are claiming marriage allowance it has to be exactly it has to be exactly 1260 it cannot be less than 1260 it cannot be more than 1260 so since uh, they have claimed the marriage allowance so wife is now entitled to get personal allowance of only 11310 so let's calculate income tax husband 27,430 into 20 percent 27,430 into 20 percent it is 5,486 now wife will also have to pay the tax 20 percent of 190 which is 38 but due to marriage allowance uh, claim husband is going to save the tax so we'll deduct marriage allowance reduction marriage allowance reduction which is 1260 into 20% which is 252 it means 5486 minus 252 is 5234 so if i ask you what is the total tax which couple is going to pay you just need to add these two if i ask you so couple is going to be actually 5272 but a very very important point is 
when they are claiming marriage allowance then it has to be exactly 1260 it cannot be less than that it cannot be more than that that is the main concept which i wanted to discuss okay come here uh let us solve this question is very simple marriage allowance we know that marriages must second husband and wife both must be basic rate taxpayer kevin and jody are married kevin is employed and earns salary 35000 per annum jody spends most of her time looking after their two children but works on saturday earnings annual salary just 6000 they do not have any other income jody makes an election to transfer uh jody is transferring a uh, personal allowance to uh kevin obviously it has to be 1260 so kevin is having 35 jody 6 so very simple question i would say close question 5 kevin jody employment income 35000 and this 6000 Personal allowance one two five seven zero. It is six thousand. That's going to be zero, obviously. From thirty five thousand, if I deduct one two five seven zero. From thirty five thousand, if we deduct one two five seven zero, what we'll be getting? Uh, we get twenty two thousand four hundred and thirty. Income tax. Twenty-two thousand four hundred and thirteen to twenty percent. It results in what amount? Four thousand four hundred and eighty-six. Let's deduct marriage allowance reduction. Marriage allowance reduction. Oh, one two six zero twenty percent. One two six zero. Into twenty percent, it results in two fifty-two. That is four thousand two hundred and thirty-four. Income tax liability. Okay. Now let us discuss one more concept. The concept is of minor child income. Actually, uh, minor means who is having age less than 18 years in UK. Actually, according to HMRC, if minor minor is having a gross income of 100 pound, then this entire income belongs to minor child. But if the amount of the income is more than 100 pound, then the entire income belongs to parents. If the income was provided by the parents, repeat. If minor is having the income till hundred pound, then it belongs to minor. Otherwise, if it is more than hundred, then entire income actually belongs to parents, provided that the parents and have given the same income to minor. But if any other relative, uh, any other relatives, they have given this income to minor, then that income does not belong to parents. Repeat. If minor is having hundred pound till hundred pound, then this income belongs to minor. Otherwise, if it is more than that, then this belongs to parents. If parents has given that income to the minor child, let me tell you the rule. What it says so that you will be having a really good idea. Look at this income of minor. Income of hundred pound gross or less, which is directly transferred by parent to minor child, will be treated as child's income. Income of more than hundred gross, which is directly transferred from a parent to minor, will be treated as parent's income. This applies only to parents, not to any other relatives. Okay. Now another concept is income on jointly held property. Now listen and listen carefully. In case of husband and wife, they have let's say jointly owned property. Okay. If nothing is mentioned regarding, if nothing is mentioned, if uh, nothing is mentioned regarding actual ownership, 
if nothing is mentioned regarding actual ownership then it is always assumed that income from jointly owned property will be split 50 percent. repeat if there is a jointly owned property and income is coming from that property actual ownership obviously could be different than 50 50 percent but if actual ownership is if actual ownership has not been declared to hmrc by husband and wife then whatever income is coming from the property which is jointly owned then we will split that income into 50 50 percent if actual ownership has been declared to hmrc then property income from the jointly owned property will be split according to actual ownership okay one more concept if husband and wife they are having joint bank account they are having joint bank account then interest income from joint bank account is always split 50 50 only in case of jointly owned property when husband and wife they go to hmrc they declared actual ownership then income from the property income from any other asset which is jointly owned when they declared actual ownership then income from jointly owned asset will be the portion according to their actual ownership but when it comes to joint bank account no matter uh, who is having more income in that account it does not matter at all in case of joint bank account interest income which is coming from the bank, joint bank account it is always split 50 50 okay so i hope now you have a really good idea about this jointly owned asset and all these things let's try this question let's try question number six i would strongly advise you people should i would say pause the video then obviously solve and then unpause it says calculate tax payable by kate for the tax year 21 22 kate has the following income outgoings and allowances for the year ended 5th april 2022 she's married to norman we have a salary we have benefit accessible as employment income we have allowable expense of employment income so 41,850, we will add 1875. We will deduct 95. Here comes the employment income. 41,850 plus 1875 minus 95. It is 43,630. That is actually employment income. We have bank interest 2650, which is saving income. Building society interest 2115 interest from isa isa stands for individual saving account which is 500 interest from isa is always exempt so right now dear student you just need to have one concept the concept is whatever interest income is coming from isa individual saving account it is exempt for isa examiner is going to use the word isa so you there's no need to get confused any income from individual saving account is exempt so this 500 is exempt okay norman and kate have a daughter ashley age 10 years minor ashley was given 5% 3.5% wall loan 5000 pound 3.5% wall loan on 6 april 2021 as a birthday present by kate look at this ashley was given 5000 pound 3.5% wall loan this is 3.5 if I take 3.5% of this 5,000, it comes to 175. Since this income 175 is more than 100 pounds, so entire 175 actually belongs to Kate. Because Kate is the one who has given this uh, 5,000 pound 3.5% war loan as gift to Ashley. 
since the income is more than 100 pounds so entire income belongs to kate not only the excess entire income the entire 175 belongs to kate so there's one more interest income for kate which is 175 on 15 november 2021 norman kate jointly bought a property that is let out as unfurnished accommodation the accessible property income for tax year 21 22 is 4100 no declaration has been made in respect actually no declaration has been made for the actual ownership since uh, no declaration has been made for the actual ownership then it has to be 50 percent then 50 percent belongs to kate and then 50 percent belongs to norman we have just discussed if there is a jointly owned property and income is coming from that property and actual ownership has not been declared to hmrc then whatever income is coming from the jointly owned property it will be split 50 50 percent so let us calculate income tax payable for kate we have employment income of 43,630, which is non-saving income. We have 2050 property income. It is also non-saving income. And then we have got saving incomes as well. So let me go here. That's question number six. Non-saving. Saving. We do not have dividend. So total. Employment income is a non-saving income which is 43,630 now let's go for property income which is 2050 50% of 4100 now let's go for interest income interest 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 from bank receive is 2650 interest from bank interest from bank is 2650 interest uh, from building society interest from building society you have to write complete that is 2115 then three and a half percent interest which is coming from 3.5 percent of loan belongs to kate because it is more than 100 pounds 3.5 percent war loan it is 175 interest from IAC is exempt but you have to mention in your answer interest from isa interest from isa is exempt you have to write in your answer it is exempt so let us go for the total 43,630 plus 2050 there's a total comes to 45680 26502115 plus 175 it is 4940 achha uh, ji sorry i just changed the language oh uh, extremely sorry apologies for that total income See, sometimes it happens. Huh? Just, just it was a slip of tongue. 45680-4940. So, 50620. I'll be deducting personal loans. 12570. But I strongly believe you should be able to calculate income tax liability now. Taxable income. 45,680 minus 12570. It is 33,110. 4940 plus 4940. Oh, oh. 4940. It is 38,050. So obviously, we need to tax first non saving, then we'll go to saving. Let's calculate income tax. Entire taxable income of 33,110. In non saving falls in basic rate band. Basic rate non saving 33,110 into 20%. It is 6,622. Now, uh, we need to calculate tax for saving income. Uh, we, ne we need to check the taxpayer status. Look at this 38,050. By looking at 38,050, we can easily say this individual, Kate, is a higher rate taxpayer. 
whoever is a high rate taxpayer that individual gets nil rate band of 500 so nil rate band saving income 500 into 0 is obviously 0 now let us check how much space is left in basic rate band the limit of the basic rate band is 37,700 we have used 33110 we have used this 500 also so how much is left 37700 minus 33110 minus 500 we are left with 4090 so still there is a space in basic rate band is 44090 basic rate saving income 4090 into 20% 818 now please let's go for higher rate saving income total saving income which needs to be taxed is 4940 this is the amount we have tax 500 and 4090 so for 4940 minus 500 minus 4090 we are left with only 350 315 to 40 percent it is 140 so here comes the income tax liability which is 7580 income tax liability which is 7580 okay in this class we discuss uh, marriage allowance and we also discuss few more points relating to jointly owned property income of a minor child uh, now in the coming class what I'll be doing I'll be starting we'll start the lecture from tax planning relating to obviously husband and wife what sort of tax planning they can do and after that tax planning stuff uh, inshallah we'll start the new topic which is going to be property income so you people need to uh, make a proper uh, uh, try to maintain the proper register okay and very soon when we'll be starting uh, Kaplan kit question so I'll be solving inshallah I'm going to solve all those majority of the question on uh, Excel so that you should be having a really good idea how do we solve uh, ATX question on Excel so I would say have a nice day thanks a lot thanks for watching this video